We were out of them? No. That's for sure. So good morning. Well, welcome to our uh, contemporary service. We're, we're glad you're here, and we are very excited to be baptizing Scarlett during our service today. Yay! <laughs> so this is a, a much more informal service for us than our traditional 930 services, so uh, feel free to, to sing along, to just be, be comfortable. Enjoy uh, praising our Lord. And I'll turn it over to the musicians. <laughs> to hear the song of creation, the wind and the rhythm of the rain. Oh, the thunder, it speaks of your power, but there's something in the sound of the saints. I've been washed in the roar of the ocean. From the lips of those you saved, a redemption song will rise. With a sound so full, it cracks the sky. Whoa. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full in immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive a great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. 
Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Good morning. This is a reading from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas and made made it firm firm upon the the rivers of the of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord and who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure heart, who have have not pledged pledged themselves to falsehood, nor nor sworn by what is a fraud, they shall receive a blessing from the Lord, and and a just just reward reward from from the God of their their salvation. salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, of those those who who seek seek your face, face, O God God of Jacob. Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high. O everlasting doors, and And the the King King of glory glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, Lord strong and mighty. The Lord, Lord mighty in battle. battle. Lift up your head, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors. And And the the King King of of glory glory shall shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The The Lord Lord of hosts. hosts. He He is the the King King of glory. glory. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? And then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ.
So today, we are celebrating All Saints Sunday, a great day for a baptism. Why is it that we set aside a Sunday each year to commemorate the saints? Well, the tradition is actually meant to provide an opportunity to acknowledge that we stand upon the shoulders of those who lived and died before us and to give them recognition. Now, what we've accomplished in life is partially due to the saints that came before us. And it's a time to remember that death is not the final word. Death is not the end. The great cloud of witnesses lives on. So we're given the story of the raising of Lazarus for this Sunday. And there's a lot to the story, but I want to focus on Lazarus. In the words of my gal pals, uh, death stinks. There's no way around that. And this story is a story about the hope of the resurrection. And I'd like you to imagine this morning what it would be like to be Lazarus, to be dead and then come back to life again. So imagine waking up in that cave wrapped in a cloth, unable to pull the covering off your own face because your hands are still bound. It's dark and it stinks in there. What you smell is your own flesh that somehow isn't rotting anymore, but the stench is still hanging in the cave around you. And then you hear a familiar voice, muffled but easy to recognize. Your dearest friend is calling you to come out. You don't even know which direction the door is or how to get to it, but you wiggle around enough to get up. You inch your way toward the light. And as you trip over yourself, struggling to get free, there's a gasp from the crowd that is gathered outside this cave. They're just as surprised to see you as you are to be there. And then you have a decision. Do you fall back into the tomb or do you step out into the unknown? Because what lies ahead is completely new territory. No one has ever done this before. No one has ever been completely unquestionably dead and then been called back to life after being buried in a tomb for four days. But here you are. And as you stumble forward, that voice you love says, unbind him and let him go. And the cloth comes off. And you can see Jesus standing there, tears streaming down his face, welcoming you back to life. So this is resurrection. This is new life. But here's the thing. We often can't experience resurrection until we experience death. We can't accept new life in Christ until we allow our old sinful lives to end. So here's a question for us all. What do you need to let die so that you can come out of your own tomb? What binds you to death and prevents you from living abundantly, fully, as a new creation? And we can live in the midst of fear with courage because God's promise of resurrection gives us the confidence to resist the power of death over us. Death doesn't get the last word for Lazarus or for us. Whatever stinks in your life, Jesus is calling to you, come out, and then you must decide. Do you fall back into the tomb or do you step into the unknown? Because what lies ahead is completely new territory. And just like Lazarus, we head into the unknown territory when we walk out of our own tomb. But you don't have to go there alone. When Lazarus stepped out of that tomb, there were friends there to help him get out of his grave clothes, to support him and to love him. And that's what a community of faith is for, to help each of us get unbound. And that's the reason why we have baptism in the midst of our community of faith. We are all part, we're all connected. We will all be a part of Scarlet's life in faith. You see, Jesus could have made those strips of cloth fall right off of Lazarus, but he didn't. He called 
to the others standing there and invited them into the miracle. Unbind him and let him go, he said. Jesus didn't need their help, but by inviting the friends and family of Lazarus to participate in the miracle of resurrection, he draws them and us into God's transformative work. We are all part of God's transformative work. So what is it you want Jesus to come and see in your life today? If you were to name your loneliness today, what would it be? What is the scarcity in your life that you want filled? Where does it hurt? What is your need? Who or what is your Lazarus? What stinks in your life? This invitation for Jesus to come and see is about more than particular circumstances or events. It's the invitation for Jesus to come and see the things that we fear in our lives, to come and see our loneliness, to come and see our scarcity. Wherever there is scarcity in my life, I am dying. Wherever there is scarcity in your life, you are dying. Mary and Martha were dying that day because scarcity is always a thief of life. But Mary and Martha called to Jesus to come and see. They're naming the scarcity in their lives and they're opening themselves to the abundance of Jesus. And that's what this day is about. All Saints is a day to name and release our scarcity. It's a day of abundance, a day to unbind the abundance of life that is already ours. If the saints of this life and the next life have anything to teach us, it's about the abundance of God and the abundant life that God offers. It's St. Mary proclaiming that God has filled the hungry with good things. It's St. Simeon declaring that his eyes have seen God's salvation and he is free to depart in peace. It's St. Julian of Norwich promising all shall be well, all shall be well, you yourself will see that every manner of thing shall be well. Abundance is the medicine that heals our soul of its scarcity. And that's what Martha and Mary really want. It's what we want. We want our soul to be made whole, to be made well. We want to live the fullness of life. We want to live with integrity, meaning, and purpose. We want to know that our life matters and that the values we hold make a difference, not just for ourselves, but for the lives of others and for the life of the world. We want to be connected to something larger and beyond ourselves. Which all reminds me of a famous poem about the train of life. Um, it bears repeating. The author is unknown. It goes like this. At birth, we boarded the train of life and met our parents. And we believed that they would always travel by our side. However, at some station, our parents would step down from the train, leaving us on life's journey alone. As time goes by, some significant people will board the train. Siblings, children, friends, and even the love of our life. Many will step down and leave a permanent vacuum. Others will go so unnoticed that we won't realize that they vacated their seats. This train ride has been a mixture of joy, sorrow, fantasy, expectations, hellos, goodbyes, and farewells. A successful journey consists of having a good relationship with all passengers, requiring that we give the best of ourselves. The mystery that prevails is that we do not know at which station we ourselves will step down. Thus, we must try to travel along the track of life in the best possible way, loving, forgiving, giving, and sharing. And when the time comes for us to step down and leave our seat empty, we should leave behind beautiful memories for those who continue to travel on the train of life. Let's remember to thank God for giving us life to participate in this journey. Thank you for being one of the passengers on my train. It's a great poem. So Jesus, come and see. Unbind us so that we may live fully in your abundant life. 
Amen. All right. At this time, we're going to have our presentation of Scarlett, who is going to be baptized. So I invite the parents, and I think the godparents are joining us via yep. FaceTime. Right now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, I think just I think we'll stand here. Come on. Out. Come on out. So do they? Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a copy of the bulletin in front of you to be able to answer the questions? Okay, great. All right. So are we ready? Okay, here we go. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. So you all together say, I. I present Scarlett Jean Grove to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. All right, and this question is for all of you gathered here. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support Scarlet in her life in Christ? If so, answer, we will. We will. All right. So now let us join with all those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for Scarlet Jean, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Teach her to love others and the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to move to the back. The actual take baptism will take place now. the water. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, Scarlett, can I get you to lean over this? I can. No. Oh, now I want to hold it. So, I'll try not to get your hair here. So, Scarlett Jean, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. That's all right. And of the Holy Spirit. I didn't get you too wet, did I? <laughs> All, right. All right. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. All right. I don't wanna... So Scarlet Jean, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. All right. Now we'll... Wait a minute. Let me give you a, your a candle. I don't know if I can reach this, but... I love Jesus. Then we'll, we'll move our, we'll work our way back up to the altar again. Jesus, I love Jesus.
let us welcome the newly baptized. And together with me, we receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Yay, welcome Scarlett, congratulations. <laughs> Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Please feel free to pass the peace with one another. So welcome to all of our, uh, our guests here today. Um, it's great to have you here. And you are all welcome to receive communion at the time when we go through the Eucharist and we offer communion. And when you come up to receive communion, feel free to take a flower, tripping. Feel free to take a flower. <laughs> In, in honor of your saints, the saints in your life, those who have passed on, and you can place it back on the baptismal font. It's our way of, of remembering and showing that connection uh, between all of us, those that are in heaven and those on earth. And uh, so feel free to take a flower when you come up for communion. I'm going to turn it over to the musicians. <laughs> would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, his free I the child For me, not again. 
continues with a great thanksgiving. The Lord is here. God's great is with us. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is right indeed. It is our joy and our salvation. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise through Christ, your only Son. You are the source of all life and goodness. Through your eternal word, you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we sinned and turned away, you called us back to yourself and gave your Son to share our human nature. By his death on the cross, he made the one perfect sacrifice for the sin of the world and freed us from the bondage of sin. You raised him to life triumphant over death. You exalted him in glory. In him you have made us a holy people by sending upon us your holy and life-giving spirit. Therefore, with the faithful who rest in him, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, glory and thanksgiving to you, Holy Father. On the night before he died, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread. 
And when he had given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And after supper he took the cup of wine. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Your death we show forth. Your resurrection we proclaim. Your coming we await. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Therefore, loving God, recalling your great goodness to us in Christ, his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and this cup of salvation. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which we offer through Christ, our great high priest. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine which we receive may be to us the body and blood of Christ, and that we, filled with the Spirit's grace and power, may be renewed for the service of your kingdom. United in Christ with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing honor, honor, and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Now as Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We all share the one bread. <laughs> the gifts of God for the people of God. Sorrows and trade them for joy. 
From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was brought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was brought with The precious blood service continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people, forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world in the name of the Holy Trinity. In the wayside, lost on a lonely road. I was chasing the high life, trying to satisfy my soul. Oh, 
to love and serve Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I believe there's cake in the social hall. So if anyone who wants to stay for cake and coffee and yep. <laughs> <laughs> 